Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. A Fargo North student tested positive for COVID-19 today on the first day of classes. The school says they know who the student is and they're trying to gather a list of close contacts to notify families. Those close contacts will have to quarantine. That includes anyone who is within six feet of this person for longer than 15 minutes. Also, one week into their school year, an entire class at a North Dakota elementary school is under quarantine after a student tested positive for COVID-19. It happened in a kindergarten class at Thompson Public Schools. In a letter dated August 30th, the superintendent says students will not return to the classroom until September 14th. Those 24 kindergarten students will instead do distance learning. The Centers for Disease Control is telling states to be ready to distribute a coronavirus vaccine by November 1st. According to the New York Post, the director of the CDC wrote in a letter to officials that a Texas-based healthcare company will soon request permits to build distribution sites and that the process should be expedited. The November 1st potential uh, ready date is two days before the November 3rd presidential election. Let's take a look at the COVID-19 numbers now. In Minnesota, the Department of Health is reporting 761 confirmed cases of COVID-19, along with seven new deaths linked to the illness. In total, more than 1,800 deaths have been attributed to the disease. In North Dakota, there are 265 new cases, along with three new deaths in the state. The death toll is at 148. Great to see the wind was lighter today, but it sounds like it could ramp up again soon. Let's find out what's going on this evening from Nathan in your first alert forecast. Hey, Nathan. Hey, Andrew. Yeah, most of the today was pretty quiet for us across the board, but we have seen those clouds and some showers making their way in from the north and the winds out of the south ahead of a cold front have been picking up as well. Notice those wind gusts. 30 miles per hour in Jamestown, 26 miles per hour in Valley City, even in Sisseton, seeing a 33 mile per hour gust as well. Fargo. Winds gusting 28 miles per hour. Again, these are winds out of the south. We do expect even stronger northwest winds to move in behind this cold front, and that's why we do have that wind advisory going for most of our North Dakota neighborhoods from the Devil's Lake Basin down through Jamestown, including Fargo and down through the Sisseton Hills as well. Winds gusting upwards of 50 miles per hour are possible, especially in those more rural parts of our North Dakota neighborhoods. They're a bit more exposed to northwesterly winds. Now, here's how things look on that satellite and radar. Those clouds making their way right along the I-94 corridor. Most of the rainfall right now focused north in our northern Minnesota neighborhoods. We'll take a look and see that uh, areas near, say, Huntley, heading toward Roseau, just some light to moderate rainfall at this time. But the big picture shows, of course, the big system, the cold front, moving its way into our western neighborhoods very soon. So, of course, we'll talk about what this cold front means for us and how it sets the stage for a busy next, uh, busy and cooler, you could say, next few days coming up in a couple minutes. All right, thanks, Nathan. Police want you to know about a high-risk sex offender now living in Fargo. Joseph Puglisi III is living at 2310 8th Street North. He was convicted of luring a minor by computer in December 2014. He was 23 years old when he met a 17-year-old girl online and asked her to send him sexually explicit photos. He also offered her $15 million in exchange for sex. He met up with a victim and had sexual contact with her, even though she said no several times. High-risk sex offenders are considered the most likely to reoffend. Three charges against a man involved in a murder investigation have now been dropped. Lee Fry Jr. was allegedly inside a maroon Buick sedan on May 12th when several gunshots were fired near the Northport Hornbachers. 39-year-old Antoine White was killed. Cass County State's Attorney, Assistant State's Attorney Ryan Younggren says the state cannot prove that Fry fired one of the weapons and said that Fry never drove the car or knew it was stolen. Younggren added that Fry also didn't know that the firearm was stolen and didn't have intent to deprive the owner of the firearm. Fry is due back in court on October 1st. A man is recovering after authorities say his roommate attacked him. Police were called to the 200 block of 17th Street South in Moorhead at around 9.30 last night. The caller said he punched and cut his roommate in a fight. Police say the victim was rushed to the emergency room with significant cuts to his face, neck and hand. 36-year-old Matthew Gilbert was arrested for domestic assault and second-degree assault with a dangerous weapon. The victim, victim's name is not being released. Another deputy right when I left and said, Potter called us around. And, um, I think it was the adrenaline. I guess it kind of caught me off guard. 
Newly released files detail a wild night that led to an Ottertail County deputy to punch a veteran multiple times. He sued the sheriff's department, recently winning more than a million dollars. For the first time, we hear recordings from that night. Valley News Team's Joshua Pagero has that plus police files. Deputy showed up to a Parker's Prairie, Minnesota bar in Ottertail County. Cameron Bowden was accused of assaulting two women and a man who came to their defense. I don't know if he thought I gave him a dirty look or that set him off. Next thing you know, I was on the ground. He grabbed me by my hair, threw me up against the wall on the ground, started kicking me in the head. But the situation, which happened on December 13 of 2018, took a different turn once Ottawa County and Douglas County deputies showed up to his home after he fled on foot. So once I saw the stripes, so took me by surprise mostly. Investigators say Bowden refused to cooperate and a struggle began with Ottawa County Deputy J.J. Krupich, which led to him punching Bowden twice. I was afraid I was going to get hit. Okay. So. And then, uh, so with that going on, what, what do you do? So, I... I hit him twice. These pictures show the results of that assault, according to his lawyer. Oh, he's got a headache. So bad. Yeah. You're what happened at your house? Yeah, the cops. Bowden disclosed having post-traumatic stress disorder related to his overseas combat missions as a Marine. Last week, he was awarded $1.6 million from the state of Minnesota. You feel up to tell me what happened tonight? I don't know what happened. Okay. Deputy Krupich left the force. He was investigated by the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension. Yet, Becker County prosecutors declined pursuing charges. In Ottertail County, Joshua Pagero, Valley News Live. The Ottertail County Sheriff's Office tells us there is still a pending criminal case against Cameron Bowden for the actions that night in December of 2018. Bowden's lawyer says he suffered brain damage as a result of the deputy's attack. A home that is at the center of a death investigation on the White Earth Indian Reservation went up in flames over the weekend. The house is located in rural Monoman County. The Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension confirms to Valley News Live it is looking into the circumstances that led to the fire. 32-year-old Beth Hill was found dead inside that house last month, but her cause of death is not yet known. The state fire marshal has now joined that investigation. Court documents say a man intentionally started a fire at a downtown Fargo bar. Firefighters responded to a fire at Cowboy Jack's bar last Saturday morning. Officials say a picnic table on the outside patio was on fire and caused more than $1,000 in damages. Michael Williams is now facing charges for the crime. Documents state that he held the umbrella for some time to make sure it was on fire. Inspectors say because the table was close to the building, it could have been destroyed if it wasn't put out quickly. Fargo police are still looking for the man who stole a car, drove it around town, and ditched it. The situation started just after midnight on Tuesday at 30th Avenue South and Wheatland Drive South. Officers spotted the stolen vehicle and tried to stop it, but the driver took off. The vehicle was spotted in two different areas around town. Then police saw the driver running away. Officers set up a perimeter and brought in a police dog. Authorities found the car in the 900 block of 44th Street South. The car has been returned to the rightful owner. The Walsh County Sheriff's Department is asking you to keep an eye out for this stolen ATV and the person who took it. They posted on their Facebook page today saying this was taken from a Grafton farmstead. If you see it or know anything about the theft, call the Walsh County Sheriff's Office at 352-2041. More kids will be going back to school tomorrow, which means there will be more traffic in the morning. What you can do to make the drop-off easier is next on Valley News Live at 6. And you might need the light jacket and the umbrella if you step out, expecting cooler temperatures moving in with a strong northwest wind and the chance of some showers in the FM area this evening as that cold front moves through. And same for our friends in Grand Forks. Look at this cooling into the 50s as we go through the rest of the night. We'll, of course, break down that shower chance next.